New PlayStation rumors surface, the new Warhammer loses MMO status, and the father of Street Fighter takes an unplanned vacation. All this and no mercy today on Hot Off The Grill. Hello and welcome to the March 31st installment of Hot Off The Grill. I am Senior Editor Jason Finelli, and it's time to turn up the heat to take a look back at the best gaming news of the past week. The next PlayStation may have been exposed before schedule if a report by Kotaku on Wednesday proves to be accurate. According to the report, the new system is called Orbis, Latin for circle. It will be released during the 2013 holiday season and will sport an AMD X64 CPU and AMD Southern Islands GPU. Vita connectivity could be a big part of the new console, as Orbis Vita is Latin for the circle of life. The most intriguing rumor in the piece is the proposed anti-used game protocol. If you buy a hard copy of the game instead of downloading it, you will still have to authenticate the purchase via the network. Essentially, you have to prove to Sony you purchased a new copy in order to register the game to your account. Anyone who buys a pre-owned disc will only get a trial version of the game unless they pay a fee. If this is correct, Orbis is trying to make the online pass idea universal, and that is not a good idea. Sony is basically telling consumers, you're going to pay what we want, not what you want, so there. Last time I checked, the general public doesn't take kindly to being told what to do. Just ask Bioware. In the newest installment of As THQ Turns, the company announced that the new Warhammer 40k MMO, Dark Millennium, will lose the MMO part of the game, becoming a single player title with multiplayer components. The company also announced 118 layoffs, 79 at Darksiders developer Vigil Games, and 39 at Relic Entertainment, creator of last year's Warhammer 40k Space Marine. News of people losing their jobs is never a good sign, but for THQ recently, it just seems to be par for the course. Game cancellations, sale rumors, more and more people being cut. It's sad to see a big time publisher like THQ having so much trouble, especially when they have franchises like Saints Row and Darksiders, and the exclusive licenses to the WWE and UFC games. Here's to hoping THQ can turn it around, but right now, it just does not look good. A light menu of new games hit stores this week, but you don't need quantity to still have quality, so get out those glasses and let's taste what's on tap. Return to the course with Tiger Woods PGA Tour 13, incorporating Kinect motion control for the first time in the series. Now that all three systems have motion control, if you live to move, you're taken care of. Namco resurrects a classic racing franchise with Ridge Racer Unbounded, and Capcom surprises their fans by releasing the Devil May Cry HD collection a full week early. That's, uh, that's about it. Yep. Slow, uh, slow week. Let's, uh, let's move on. The head of that game company, Kelly Santiago, has announced she will be leaving her position effective immediately. The departure is amicable, as Santiago said she's simply leaving to seek new challenges. Jenova Chen, co-founder of that game company, released a statement saying, While we want to continue the path of that game company, Kelly has found a new direction in her career. Though our path in the future may be different as TGC begins our next project, we wish Kelly a good journey and that our paths may cross again. Santiago was a big part of that game company's success, as her direction put her company in the right flow and allowed them to blossom from a small bud to a magnificent flower. Here's hoping she sees major success on the next leg of her journey. See what I did there? Yoshi Noriono, the head of Capcom's Street Fighter team, has announced he will be taking time off to recuperate after a recent health scare. Ono was hospitalized after collapsing at a gaming event in South Korea. Ono wrote on his Twitter, I'll refrain from work for current job for a while. Another person is in charge of the Street Fighter series for a while. Of course, I'll give constant support to it. Capcom also released a statement to Game Informer, saying Ono-san is a vital component of the Street Fighter franchise, and he continues to play an important role on the R&D team at Capcom. More information regarding his involvement with future Street Fighter products will be revealed at Capcom's annual Captivate event next week. Ono-san, I have one thing to say to you. You have more than earned some downtime for the countless hours of entertainment you've given me and others. Take your time, get back to 100%, and we'll be here when you return. We're not going anywhere. Get well soon, man. Lace up your boots and get ready for the big time, because we're stepping into the ring on this week's Revisited. In honor of WrestleMania 28 this Sunday, we're hitting the squared circle with WWF No Mercy on the Nintendo 64. This is still widely regarded the best wrestling video game of all time. Players could finally fight backstage, in ladder matches, and on top of the announcer's table for the first time on the system. 
The extended Creator Wrestler mode featured four independent ring attires for each slot, basically allowing for four times the amount of characters that could be created. Couple all of that with a huge roster and a story mode that branched off in different directions, and you had a bona fide world champion caliber game in WWF No Mercy. And that's the bottom line, because this senior editor said so. That's all for this week. Check back next time for news from Captivate 2012, PAX East 2012, and whatever else this industry throws at us. If you smell what the grill is cooking. Thanks for watching.